Hi, I'm Caitlin Kite, and I'm the host of The Wild Side, which is a science and nature-themed show here on The Source FM. And I usually pre-record my shows because I have a job, so I work during the day when my show airs. And I come in here to Studio 2 in order to record the spoken version of my show, but also put in the music that I want to play in between those bits. And I save it all as one file and then load it up on the studio next door so it can play during the day. But even though I prefer to use this place to do a pre-recorded show, actually it's also wired up so that you can do a live show as well. So it's really an adaptable studio that's good for whatever your needs are. Now the first thing I would do when I would come in is turn on the computer, obviously, and then I would log in to Studio 2. And once I'm in Studio 2, I would use the Audacity software in order to both record the spoken part of my, uh, of my show, but also to import all the music that I want to put in between those bits. So it's a single program that I can use for everything that I do for a single show. And this is the icon here with the little headphones over top of the sound waves. Now once I have Audacity open, I'm ready to start recording. And you can start recording immediately or you can start with a song, which is what I normally do. So we can go through the process of opening a song and adjusting it to all the right settings and then thinking about making a verbal recording to go afterwards. So once Audacity is opened, I would start off by importing a song that I would use to start my show. So I would go to File and then Open. And usually I will have brought the files into the desktop and stuck them right on the desktop or put them on a USB drive uh, and stuck that in the back. So I would navigate to that. And in this case, we'll go here to the desktop and to the folder that has the songs. And I'll choose one of the songs that I'm interested in. And then you can just click open. And it takes a couple of seconds to import it. And you'll see here on, on this particular song that there are some red stripes and the red stripes indicate where there is uh, a bit of noise and that might come across sounding unattractive on the radio so we want to dial that down a little bit and to do that you can just select the whole sample which you can do with the open apple a and go up to effect and amplify and that allows you to uh, de-amplify something or make it a bit quieter or amplify something and make it a bit louder. So in this case, the computer automatically chooses the setting for you. So it's going to dial it down by about uh, 0.8. And I can click OK. And I, I rarely would adjust that because the computer knows what to do. It takes a couple of seconds and it runs it through. And now you can see there are no red lines. And now it's ready for me to start recording the verbal portion of my show. So now that I've got my song prepared, I'm ready to make sure that the mic is ready to start recording. And to do that, I need to make sure that the volume is up loud enough and that everything is functioning as it should and is feeding into the computer, which is going to record from the mixer. So whenever you're going to record something through the microphone, then the first thing you need to do is make sure that you are sitting in a good position relative to the microphone. Or to think about it another way, that the microphone is sitting in a good position relative to wherever you want to sit. Now I usually record facing the screen because I'm monitoring what's happening as I record. So I like to have the microphone between me and the computer screen. And that means I have to bring it down and a little bit uh, out from the desk. And you'll notice that depending on how close I am to the microphone, the level of my voice is going to change. And so that's something that I monitor beforehand and set up so that wherever I'm sitting relative to the microphone, I've got the level that I want uh, to record into. And you can check that on the desk to make sure that it is actually high enough or that it's not too high. Now, something that you can do while you're in the midst of recording a show is wear a pair of headphones. And headphones let you check that what is coming out of your mouth and going into the mic and then from the mic into the computer is an appropriate level. Now, I don't like to do this because I find it to be a bit distracting. And I also know that afterwards, I'm going to 
manipulate the recordings of my voice in order to make them more consistent with the music. And so I don't ever wear headphones, but this is something that actually is not the best of things to do. It's a really good idea to listen to yourself and make sure that there aren't any sounds that are out in the studio. Maybe the chair is making some squeaking noises. Uh, maybe there's something wrong with the mic. And if you have the headphones on while you're recording, you'll know exactly what's happening. So let's move this out of the way so I can show you the desk. Now the desk is really nicely labeled and this is a system that helps you to make sure that you aren't going to get lost and you always know what you need to do. And you can see that each of the buttons here is labeled according to what it corresponds to. So here for example uh, is microphone one. Microphone two is the one that I've just moved out of the way and so you can see it's up. Uh, this one is not on so it's down so you can quite clearly see whether something is active or not and you can make something active by pressing the on or off so this way this guy is ready to go at any time and then when I want to fade in I can fade in and then fade back out again and it's always on or I can just turn it right back off now these two are microphones for whenever you're actually recording with people's voices here we've also got uh, jacks that go into CDs so that you can bring in your own music and play it here. The PC, which is uh, the computer here, you can bring in discs to play or you can plug in whatever uh, USB stick you've got, for example. The box is something that most people don't tend to use, but if you've got some live recording, you can plug right into the box. And then here is the master, and you can see that there's a bit of tape here because we don't want anyone to adjust the master. This is the setting that it always needs to be at, and because it's in place, you know that you're never going to be able to adjust it. Now elsewhere, there are some other dials here that you might want to check out. Here, for example, are the speakers so that if you need to play back what you have been recording, you can adjust how quiet or loud those are. Here are the headphones so that while you're recording and listening to yourself, you can uh, adjust the volume up or down. And here is the recording level. And what you will probably tend to find is that you always want the recording level up as high as possible, which is right here. And that's because in the past we would have adjusted the recording level of each thing individually. But now we have them all set in the right position and we just change the master recording level right here so that you don't have to manipulate each one depending on whether it's the microphone or the CD or the PC. Now one of the most important things you're going to be using the mixer for is to check that your levels are loud enough and that you're recording at a volume that actually will be picked up by the computer and can be used in Audacity. So you'll see that there is both a left channel and a right channel. And for both of these here, uh, where you are monitoring how loud you're getting, you want to make sure that they stay within the green. If you get into the amber, then it's a little too loud. And if you get up into the red, well, obviously that's very much the danger zone. Now you can adjust this uh, if you go to the very top of the channel of the thing that you are working with, so in my case microphone 2, you can fiddle with the little red knob and change it so that it's actually getting louder or so that you can bring it down uh, quieter. But luckily, because uh, a very wonderful expert person has adjusted all of these knobs and left them in the right position, you don't actually need to do that. And that's what you can do here with the recording level knob and just use that one thing for every single thing on the master board. So now that the microphone is ready to go and the mixing desk is all set up, that means I'm ready to start recording my vocals. Now the first thing I want to do is put my cursor here on the very end of my song so that I'm starting to record in the right place just after it ends. So I put it near the end and then just kind of tab over until the line is lined up with the very end of the song and then it's ready to go. So I would bring the microphone down and make sure that my levels are still all right and it looks like they are. So I'm ready to actually start talking. And if you want to start recording a bit of vocal in the middle of something else, so right here I've already got the window open and I've got the song there, then you don't want to just press record, you want to press the shift key and then the record. And the shift key allows you to continue recording at the end of something that you've already got up. So I've pressed my shift key and I can see that it's ready to go. I can see that it has kind of a continuous recording uh, icon that appears. And so then I go ahead and press the recording button. 
So once I do that, I can let my finger off the Shift key and I can start recording. And you can see here that it's going to continue moving across the screen. I can see the sound waves as my voice records. And I'm just going to talk a little bit so that I have something here to play with. So now I'm talking into the microphone in order to record some vocals. Just talking for about 15 seconds so that there's a bit of sound on the screen. Now you can see just at a glance that my vocals are much quieter than the music. And that is something that I expected just because of how the mixing desk and Audacity work together. So I can highlight the bit that I've recorded here with my vocals and do the same thing that I did with the song at the beginning where I can change the amplitude so that it's a bit louder or a bit quieter as I need. So I go back up to effect, go down to amplify, and the computer automatically recognizes that this needs to be about 7.3 times louder than it is. So I can go ahead and press OK with the setting that it gives me and it makes it a bit louder so that these two things will sound more consistent when the song goes into my vocals. Whoever is listening to it on the radio in their car, for example, they won't have to adjust the volume. It will all be at the right sound. So once you've finished recording your vocals, then you're ready to export the file so you can take it next door and load it up ready to play. Now to do that, you go to File, and choose Export. And it will bring down a pop-up menu here so that you can choose the name of the file and also where you want to save it. So in my case, I'm happy to have it on the desktop. And I will call this Test. Now you can change the format if you want, but MP3 is the automatic option, and that's fine for me. So I can go ahead and press Save. And then it will bring up the metadata section. And this is where you can change the name of uh, the artist or the track or any of those details that might pop up in a player whenever you want to play this somewhere. So here, uh, because I've imported a song to start, usually those are the settings that it will come with. And if that's the case, then you can press Clear so that you can replace those things with the information that you want to put in. So in my case, I can type in my name and then go down to Track Title and put in Test. I can press OK once to save those values in place, and then OK one more time to go ahead and export the file. And with long files like mine, an hour-long show, it can take a few minutes to save. But with something short like this, it might be only 30 seconds or even fewer. Now, I always like to start my shows with a song, but some people might just want to jump right into recording vocals. And if that's the case, then obviously you don't have to start by opening up another file. You can just start by creating your own from scratch. And in that case, you would just open up Audacity as normal and have a new file. And then it pops up a window that's completely empty and ready for you to start recording. So once you've got everything set up on the mixing desk, then you can get your mic into place and then go ahead and just press record. And it will go straight into recording your vocals without any other music or anything else. And that will then be the same process from then on. Once you're done, you can go ahead and press stop. And then you can export it as a file. So if you're in here in Studio 2 and you find yourself confused at any time because of Audacity, because of the Mac, because of the Mixer, then there's a really nice resource here that was written by one of the studio managers who is sadly no longer with us. But he's left behind all of his wisdom. So if you can go right here to the desktop, then you can see uh, all of this wonderful thing that he's left behind, which is a document called Using Studio 2. And you can just open that up. And it's got uh, photographs of all the different bits and pieces that you might use. It's got a lot of text that walks you through each of the different steps of all the things you would want to do while you're recording a show. And it really just gives you all the information that you could possibly want. And you can just see here that uh, it's, it's a pretty small document, so it's just cutting to the chase and giving you those minor details, definitions, troubleshooting guide. Uh, it tells you what things you're likely to want to adjust and what things you really should just stay away from and leave to the experts. So if you do ever get stuck at any point, that is the resource that you want to go to. So I think that's pretty much everything you need to know to record a show. That's all the stuff that I do on a weekly basis. And I've been doing it for about three years now, so hopefully I've passed on some of my hard-earned knowledge to you guys. 
and hopefully you'll come in soon and record your own shows. But for now, I think it's time for me to get back to doing mine.